Today, I will show you how to make Daft Punk music in three different styles. We will explore how to get a vocoder sound like this. How to use the power of filters to make your synths very interesting. We will examine tried and true drum patterns of all kinds. And we will learn how to make those fat saw stacks that are wider than life. So, are you ready? Let's dive right in. So, all vocoders work basically the same way. You need, on the one hand, a carrier signal. This carrier signal usually has the melodic and harmonic information. In this case, I used wavetable with a saw slash square type wavetable. It usually works best when you use a wavetable that has lots of overtones, for example, a saw wave. And then I wrote in some MIDI with the harmonic and melodic information of what I want to achieve. Sounds like this. already hear the doing it right harmonics and melodics in there and then you actually mute this track because we don't want to hear that actually what we want to do is we want to bring in our vocals the vocals without the vocoder black in sound like this everybody will be dancing and we'll feel in a right you might say it sounds pretty shitty and yes it does but in this case you know the pitch doesn't matter because the pitch is coming from the carrier signal when you then slap on the vocoder plugin and you choose for the carrier here external and then it asks you audio from and there we choose the wavetable layer that we created beforehand and this then modulates our carrier signal the saw waves with our vocals sounds like this which is nice but i figured out over time if you stack multiple different vocoder plugins on top of each other you can achieve really cool lush and big results in this case i used two additional vocoder plugins one is vocoder v sounds like this and I used vocal synth as a third one. I actually only used the Compute Vox module in there. I have a video on how to use all these different vocoders on my channel if you want to look a little deeper into how these plugins work. Stacked on top of each other, these vocoders sound like this. So let's talk about the chorus here. The one element that makes the chorus cool, in my opinion, is this filtered part here. And the magic ingredient is definitely this auto filter you can see here. If I turn that off, the section sounds like this. So yeah, completely different. It gets all the movement, all its shape, all its sound actually from this filter. So if I turn on this filter, I can now modulate the cutoff frequency of this low pass filter to shape the sound however I like. And I just chose normal automation here and put in the cutoff frequency that I want to have. Looks a bit messy, but it actually gives you a lot of control and it allowed me to exactly punch in the cutoff frequency that I want to have at exactly the right moment. And also, you know, give it lots of uh, dynamics and imperfection and all the good stuff. So let's listen to it one more time in context. <laughs> Quick note about the drums here, it all starts with a good kick. The kick is basically on every downbeat, apart from this beginning section here.
And then I have a snare on two and four. This snare is also layered with different sounds. The more interesting one is probably the third one here, because as you can see here, I put in some track delay. I mean, in this case, it's technically not a delay. It's 44 milliseconds before everything else, which gives it a really cool effect. Let me show you what I mean by playing the snare fully. Let me turn off the clap now. Again with. So by putting this sample not exactly on top of all the other samples, but a little bit before, it creates this really cool flammy effect that can sometimes really help to make your drums slap. Pretty cool tip. Of course, some additional percussion. In this case, mostly cymbals of all kinds and hi-hats can't miss. Let's listen to the drum beat overall. We don't stop here though. The funny thing is you can basically leave everything just the way it is apart from the drums and make it instant drum and bass. You see, the song has a tempo of 91 BPM. So if you double that, you end up with 182 BPM, which is really nice for drum and bass. So I built a little drum and bass drum pattern and added all the elements from the first version and it worked super well immediately. Ultra wide, fat saw stacks are definitely one of my favorite production techniques of all time. And I will show you how to do them from scratch. So let's create this synth together, shall we? First of all, we need, of course, a synthesizer. I choose Serum here. It's my favorite one. This is just the init patch. So this is what you get when you open it up for the first time. And then, of course, we need some MIDI, some chords. And I went for pretty jazzy ones. And what you have to do now to get this ultra wide, ultra fat saw stack is you need as many saw waves as you can possibly get. And then you detune this individual saw waves to get this really wide, cool sound. So in this case, you know, we have this saw wave here on oscillator A and we turn up the unison, which creates additional voices. And then with this detune knob here, we can tell the synthesizer how much these individual voices differ in pitch. So you can hear as I turn that up, it gets wider and broader and lusher. Don't overdo it because then it kind of sounds out of pitch. Let's also uh, move this an octave down. It probably sounds nicer. Beautiful. Then we turn on oscillator B and we do the same thing. This one we can leave one octave higher so you, you even fill out more of the frequency spectrum. And also here we can put in just a lot of voices. Usually when the notes are higher, you can get away with even a bit more detune. So that's what we do here. Let's listen to that. So the next part in the puzzle is how do we get this modulation, this volume modulation? And I do that with an LFO. So you can grab this LFO and put it on the level knob here on both my oscillators, turn that down and pull that top part up until we have the desired loudness, maybe somewhere here. We'll see, we'll double check that in the mix afterwards. And then you can already see the LFO modulates this level. We don't want one fourth though, we want one eighth. Not 
Not too bad. Let's move on to the effects. We can add some hyperdimension here. Not too much because sometimes, I don't know, it sounds a bit weird, but it can add a bit more wideness and lushness, I, I would say. At some point you get this weird phasing effect in there, we don't want that. We can also add some dimension here, it's basically a reverb. Some distortion is always worth a try. Not too much maybe. And then we can also add some compressor, in this case an OTT style heavy multiband compression. Um, you know, don't overdo this. We will definitely double check it in the mix to dial it in perfectly. Maybe down a bit. Let's listen to it in the mix. I'll make it a bit louder. Beautiful. Beautiful indeed. All the music in this video is now out on every streaming platform. I would really appreciate it if you could check that out. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.